This is KGW News at 11. And now on KGW News at 11, the latest on the teacher strike in the Portland Public School District. Right now, it is unclear if students will be back in class on Monday. Thanks for joining us. I'm Tim Gordon. Bargaining between the district and the teachers union ended today without an agreement. The two sides are set to meet again tomorrow. Ashley Grahams talked with some parents and students about the impact. As the Portland teacher strike continues through the weekend, PPS families are faced with the possibility that schools could be closed again next week. We got everyone at home till they can figure it out. Some parents say the past few days have already been difficult. It's, you know, it's been a hard week. Well, luckily we have grandparents, so they are in town to take care of the kids. It's really inconvenient for us, but we're going to be with them as long as we have to be. Despite the hardship, many still saying they support teachers who've walked off the job. We want teachers to have more money and smaller class sizes. We're 100% for the teachers. Yeah. We love all of our teachers and community there, I but go back to school. we want everyone to go back to school. Caught in the middle of the battle are students. I feel like I should be learning. I could have, have learned more in the past two days about supposed to get salmon to study them at school, but we can't because the strike's happening. And those kids won't be back in the classroom until a deal is reached. This weekend, both the district and the union are bargaining, attempting to find a resolution. But parents are not so optimistic. Realistic that it probably won't happen Monday. I have a feeling we're in this for a while. We're expecting Monday to be closed, but we're again hoping that uh, they come to agreement as soon as possible. The district tells me bargaining will continue through the weekend. As for school on Monday, PPS says they will let families know Sunday night at 7 if students will be back in class. From the newsroom, I'm Ashley Grams, KGW News. And stay with us for continuing coverage of the strike. We will update you as soon as we learn about the plan for Monday. Look for the latest on air on KGW.com and of course on KGW Plus as well. All right, let's take a live look outside now over downtown Portland. Pretty night out on a day that is at times seen just heavy downpours. Meteorologist Joe Ranieri is here. And Joe, it sounds like we're not done with the rain this weekend yet. No, sir, we are definitely not. We are going to be seeing another round of showers. Heavy at times for your Sunday, but basically your overnight hours are going to be dry, mainly dry for uh, Sunday morning throughout the metro area. But uh, again, we're going to be looking at temperatures. It's going to be tough to climb out of the upper 50s in many locations. And at times, the showers are going to be extremely heavy uh, heading into Sunday with a chance for some uh, hail, some lightning strikes and uh, some heavy downpours. But this is what we've seen so far uh, since midnight, just over an eighth of an inch of rain. And if you do, looking back over the last uh, couple of days, we've seen a, a really good soaking and that's going to continue heading into tomorrow. So we could be closing in on close to a half of an inch of rain potentially by the end of tomorrow and more showers are in the forecast heading into a good part of next week. So this is what we have in store for tomorrow. This is that front that will be uh, moving through, uh, bringing in widespread showers, uh, I'd say by late morning, early part of the afternoon. There's another one right behind it that comes in heading into uh, Sunday night and into Monday. And here's a live look as we look toward the Moto Center over in Northeast Portland. Temperatures right now are in the mid 50s and yeah, we're going to continue to see some uh, November rain showers, but I do have at least one dry day in the long range forecast. I'll let you know what day that is coming up in a few minutes. We will look forward to that. Thanks, Joe. Well, developing tonight, Portland police are looking for the driver who hit someone early this morning and then drove off. It happened just after 1 a.m. near Southeast 148th and Stark. Police say a man was crossing the street when they were hit. They have serious injuries but should survive. The driver did not stop and has not yet been found. Well, a rainy Saturday couldn't stop more than 100 youth baseball players from playing a tournament. They were on the fields at Nielsen, Nelson High School taking part in a benefit event for Owen Weaver. Weaver was seriously injured in a car crash in September. Art Edwards has the story. On a rainy Saturday, more than 100 youth baseball players gathered at Nelson High in Clackamas County for a baseball tournament. The Team Owen Super Draft Tournament to support 12-year-old Owen Weaver. We get to be teammates with other kids and meet different coaches. But we're all here for one reason, it's to, it's to support Owen. Owen is a talented and avid baseball player. In September, he and his family went to the Oregon State-San Diego State football game. On the way home, a distracted driver slammed into the Weaver's car. Owen, his brother, and parents were all injured. 
Owen suffered a traumatic brain injury and spent weeks in intensive care. The fact that it was avoidable and that this is our reality is incredibly unfortunate. He's making progress and has moved out of intensive care, but remains in the hospital. I feel like we're at the, the first inch of a marathon for Owen right now. I feel like we have so far to go, but we're blessed and fortunate to have the opportunity to go through it with him. Um, we're just definitely hoping that we can get a, a, a healthy kid back, um, kind of regardless of the athletics. His father visited the baseball tournament. I think Owen would be really impressed by the support and outreach in the community and how everyone's coming together. The players wore Team Owen t-shirts and didn't let the rain keep them from playing. Not all of them know Owen, but the players and their families understand that they are on the field for something more important than baseball. I mean, my eight-year-old said he can't believe um, how many people love our family. All the money raised by the tournament will go to the Weaver family. They also have a GoFundMe account. They call the support they have received incredible and ask people to keep Owen in their thoughts and prayers. Art Edwards, KGW News. Playing in the rain, what great support for Owen and his family. We wish them the very best. Well, a high school football game in Oregon is under investigation after a fight broke out and forced it to stop. This was last night as Portland's Jefferson High visited South Medford in a playoff game. This is video of the game, though we don't have video of the fight itself. We've heard from Jefferson parents, though, who tell us it got so bad, Jefferson families had to be escorted to their cars. The game was called off in the second quarter. The Oregon School Activities Association is now investigating. Well, Multnomah County District Attorney Mike Schmidt has formally kicked off his re-election campaign. He held an event today at Tabor Space in southeast Portland. Schmidt says priorities for a second term include amending Oregon's Measure 110 to ban public use of hard drugs, prosecuting gun violence, and protecting survivors of domestic violence. We need to fight back against the proliferation of fentanyl and tell drug dealers that enough is enough. That's right. And to create new accountability mechanisms and expanded treatment options for those using hard drugs publicly on our streets. In order to win another term, Schmidt will have to defeat an opponent from his own office. Nathan Vasquez, a senior deputy DA in Multnomah County, has announced he is also running for district attorney.